Welcome back to Power Pro Structures Modeling Fundamentals. This is part 11, working with stiffeners. So like all the other steel commands, we're going to go to the Pro Steel tasks and on row W10 we find stiffeners. There is both straight stiffeners and stiffeners at an angle. We're going to kick off with the straight stiffeners here. Now if you read down on the prompt line it says identify the shape so we're going to select the beam or, or object that we want to put the stiffeners on and then it's going to ask us for a location for these stiffeners okay where we want to put them now now you can snap to the midpoint of the object or alternatively you can use your um, microstation snaps and just go you know near so you know I can I can I can put it in anywhere I want all right so just just you, you're not um, locked in anywhere. You can see that they drop in nice and easy. These ones are used flat bar. I'm going to expand out the graphic here and let's go through some of these um, commands. You can see I've used flat. Um, if I untick uh, flat bar it will put, it, it will assume that I want plate in as the stiffness. Okay. Um, you can see that I can have it either chamfered, filleted or rounded and those, uh, the nominal value here of 7 of the radius is set down at the bottom there. Okay, so I have a 15mm chamfer at the moment. Okay. Uh, lengthwise, I can have a full stiffener, half stiffener, or by length, where, whereby I, I set a, a user defined length. Um, and we can go edge where I can have tapered ones. So I'll set the full height stiffener at the moment. I want it 10 mil thick, but um, like anything in ProSteel, if you have the fly out, please choose from the list. You can um, follow the numbers here. You've got your offset distances. I like having a little bit of clearance around my stiffeners so that they drop in nice and easily. Um, number five, and I'll explain this to you a little bit later, but it's the offset to the toe of the support member. All right, and I'll explain that to you shortly. Um, rounding is we round off to the nearest five millimeters. Okay, um, hopefully that's nice and clear. Uh, length number four, which is grayed out at the moment, is if I set my length to by length, by user nominated length, then number four will not gray out anymore. So let's go object view centered and look down the length of the beam. All right, and just have a look and see how this works. So here's our stiffener in here. Uh, you can see the little bit of gap there, and you can see the edge distance here. That's set by the offset number five. So let's talk about that right now. If I put a positive value in, it comes inside the beam. All right, by the same token, if I set it to a negative value, so negative 15 here, I tell it you're allowed outside the beam. Okay, outside the toe of the beam. The reason for this is that ProSteel sees this beam, the support beam, as a boundary box. And you're telling it, I want it inside the boundary box or you're allowed outside the boundary box of the beam. So I hope that makes sense. At the moment, we're allowed 15 millimeters past my boundary box. All right, reset that back to zero and that tells it you're not allowed out past the boundary box. All right. Let's have a look now at our tapered ones, or on an angle. So we've got a pretty good opportunity over here where I've got this rafter coming in on an angle to the column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my view tools to hide except just the column I want to work on and the rafter I want to work on. Now this is a really good thing to remember. Don't overcomplicate the job as you're working on it. You can see here, really nice and simple for me to work on now. So I'll go object view centered, looking into the side of my column and rafter. Now, when this um, puts this stiffener in, it's going to ask me for two things. It's going to ask me, I want the middle of what I want the stiffener in, and I would like a line giving me the angle of the stiffener. So I'm going to need a little bit of construction work here. So I'm just going to pick um, a smart line. And I'm just going to draw my like a center line down my column because it's going to ask me where is the center of the stiffener. And then I need to draw a line 
on the same angle as the rafter. So to do that, I'm going to go Object ACS Centered to the rafter. Right, it's not going to change my view, just the ACS. And now I can draw a construction line on the same plane as that angle. So I'm just going to go to the middle of the um, flanges. I'm going to go to 7, I'm going to hit 7 on my keyboard and go trim, which is uh, the modify commands, trim to intersection, trim to intersection, okay, and that gives me, now I've got a center point here, which is going to request from me, and a line on the plane that it wants me to put it in, and a center line here, and a line. So let's have a go. Stiffener at angle. It's going to ask me here, identify the shape to put the stiffener on, the column. Now it's going to say the insert midpoint of the stiffener, at which point I can grab the end of that line. And now it's going to say the position line, the angle that I want it on. So that's what this line is for. And in it goes. To do the same for the next one, I just get out of the command, come back into it, and go through the procedure again. Just like that. Alright, I can get rid of my construction lines now. I don't need those guys anymore. Rotate that around for you, and that's what they look like. Nice and neat. Meeting the parameters of, or the rules that we set originally. Okay, now what happens if I don't want both of them? Because I've got uh, an intersection of, you know, I've got a beam coming through here. So if I right click on one of these stiffeners, you can see I can delete it or change it. Okay, so I can right click and I can delete it and it will actually remove these one at a time. Select, right click, delete. Okay, and now I don't have stiffeners on the side that they're going to crash into.